double integrals over rectangular regions. So our first definition here says assume A, B, C, and D are real numbers, and we define an iterated integral for a function f, x, y over the rectangular region R, where I have A and B, which is my x, my x is between A and B, and my y is between C and D, as this double integral down below. Now, one thing to notice about this double integral, when I take a look at what I do first here, if you notice, we work from the inside out. So that's the idea, we work from the inside out here. So when working with the inside, I'm doing my dy here, and that's why I see this cd. So when I look up above here, my cd is here, and that's for my y value, my y component. And that's the idea of what we're dealing with here. Now, formally, um, with, these, with this definition here, Fubini had to take it to that step that I just described. So what I was telling you a minute ago, with these two parameters here, this wasn't assigned to an X or a Y. That didn't happen until Fubini's theorem, which is down below here, because now they're saying X, Y is an element of R2, and X is between A and B. And see, this is where they formalized it uh, for exactly that. But one thing I like about the definition itself is it gives us the order in which we handle it. And that's what's most important here. Most of us can do an integral, but do we know the order of a double integral? And that's the idea. So we're going to get into this problem now uh, to the right here. Um, this is saying a solid line under a plane z equals y plus 4. So that plane y plus 4 is here. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to create, we're going to find that volume, but it says here, and above the rectangular region, x being from 0 to 2 and y being from 0 to 4. And that's what we see down here. So that's my x, that's 2, that's my y, that's 4. And then it says, as illustrated in the following graph, evaluate the double integral of, over the region R of F, dA where fxy is y plus 4 by finding the volume of the corresponding solid. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's take it on the next page for the sake of room. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to set this up in terms of how are we going to do this double integral. Now, um, the order I'm taking is I'm going to take the order below. So I'm going to use this second one, number b, just because it's b. So this means my height of this is going to be y plus 4. That's my function. That's my z value. That's my height. And then I'm just going to go dx dy. Now notice what I did as I put those in first before I even put the bounds in. Because remember now, I'm working from the inside out. So that simply means I'm looking at my change in x first. And then if I look at my change in x here, that change in x is from 0 to 2. So 0 to 2. And then for my y value, that's 0 to 4. So there we go. So that's our basic setup for this integral. And now we're going to run through the operation of it. But I just kind of want to describe it a little bit below. So this is saying, hey, we're taking that dx first. And we're taking it with the height of z. So in essence, what I'm doing here with that height is first, I'm taking my x out. And then from there, I'm expanding this up to the height. So I'm creating this area here. And with this area here, I'm going to take this now and push it through in this direction. So that's the idea of what's going on with this integral. And that's going to be the dy in the end. That's what's going to pull it through here. So that's how this works. So now let's get into the actual problem itself. I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of the understanding of where this is all coming from. So now let's get into the actual computation. All right. So this is the first one we're going to do here. And then we, again, we work from the inside out. So now it's with respect to x. So now looking at that, realize that this y plus 4 is really just a constant. 
because it's with respect to x. So that tells me then that if I was gonna, if this was all like just the number three and I took the integral of three, that would be three x. So that's what we really have here. So this equals the integral from zero to four. And this is just gonna be y plus four x. And then it's gonna run from zero to two. And then I still have my dy for the other integral. Okay, so now our next step then is just gonna be plug in our bounds for this. So I plug in two for x, and then I plug in zero for x. So that's what we're gonna do now. So that's gonna result in the integral from zero to four. And this is gonna end up being two times the quantity y plus four dy. Now the reason why I didn't write the lower bound in here, because as soon as I plug in zero there, what's zero times any number? That would be zero. So that just, I'm minusing a zero off and this is all I have left. Hopefully that's okay. If not, let me know. Okay, now from here, I can multiply the two through, which I will because it doesn't really make a difference here. So that's zero to four, two y plus eight dy. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna integrate this. So this is gonna end up being y squared plus eight y from zero to four. So now when I plug in the four here, I'm really gonna get four squared plus eight times four minus, and I'm gonna write this in there because this is what I meant for the top, just in case you're not convinced. So this is just gonna be a zero squared plus eight times zero. And that's what I'm gonna to have to subtract off using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So now this is gonna be 16 plus 32. And then that's just gonna be that minus zero. And that's what I did up here. So now this is gonna turn out to be 32, 42, 48. So the answer for this volume is 48. So that's our answer in our first double integral, possibly. So just to remember, we work from the inside out. And when I just have the variable y, if I'm with respect to x, just realize it's a constant. I think with these, that's the most confusing component of this all. But our answer is 48. Done.